Uh, let me ask you this. Uh, what should we expect uh, from, from a Marcos presidency? I, I, in, at first, I was thinking of asking you specific themes, specific themes eh? uh, but I figured I'll give you flexibility uh, with a general question. What should we expect? Uh, actually, my analysis is very simple. This is not an aberration. This is a culmination of a process that began in 1986 of total elite control, political elite control of our political system, right? uh, political families, personalities, celebrities. Uh, so I actually expect same old, same old. To be honest, uh, and as you see it as appointments, eh? this is a government that will look like GMA, a government that looked like actually President Aquino. Um, in other words, uh, mas hindi pa Duterte. Duterte was actually the aberration. Maraming mm -hmm. Davao, maraming probinsyano, maraming military, kasi yun na kanya, that, was, that was his comfort zone. Mm -hmm. This one will be politicians and technocrats. Uh, 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 and, and many from Ateneo, La Salle, UP, um, probably less military, which is good. So I see this as a uh, same old, same old, uh, very predictable, except in one thing, you know what I mean? But also, in a way, predictable that will happen, right? Mm -hmm. The press, the media. Okay. Uh, Trixie being appointed there, first time that you have a non-press person to basically run that. Uh, because they were very successful in going around traditional media. Uh, and I guess people realize that, I mean, politicians realize now that, you know, traditional media you know, they, they can't, they don't know how to handle traditional media and they don't have to because they can go straight. Uh, what, whatever you call it, disinformation, misinformation, whatever, they, they're waste now. So actually the challenge in traditional media to be, how do you become uh, relevant, right? If, if in fact, uh, the, the officials, the politicians uh, can go directly to the people without you as, your, as, the, the, as the medium with which to mm -hmm. go to. So mm -hmm. That's the new thing. Uh, but we, we, we saw that coming already, I think. Uh, in, in the Duterte years, we saw that already coming. But governance, I'm pretty sure, same old, same old. Same old economic policies. Um, uh, human rights, you know, maybe even better than Duterte, but also, you know, with, with, with uh, I mean, I know under Sec Secretary Rimulia, he's a, He's a lawyer's lawyer, also like Secretary Guevara is a lawyer's lawyer, and they'll probably be tracking each other. Mm -hmm. But that's Prof my, my view. Prof. Darian. Yeah, on, on, I mean, first of all, I think Boma Marcos is very lucky that he came after Duterte. And I think without Duterte, I don't think a Marcos Jr. presidency would have ever happened. I mean, bulk of his vote is really Sara Duterte vote, let's be honest about it. And Sara got even more votes for the vice presidency. Having said that, uh, on the surface, I think this will be an improvement. Uh, we have a foretaste of that during the first press conference of Bomo Marcos, more or less as the presumptive president, more urbane, uh, more, I would say, someone who's presidential in terms of his uh, demeanor. Uh, and definitely we're not going to see those kind of cussing of foreign leaders. We saw him appreciating Biden being the first foreign leader to call him. Not so much, I love Putin, I love China. So those sorts of populist antics, Walasha. But now the reality is that, yes, I mean, I agree with Tony that there will be a lot of same, same. Maybe the cast will not be so different, but the script could change. The script could change. I think constitutional change is almost inevitable under this administration. I'm having a hard time seeing Bombo Marcos Jr. Uh, essentially allowing himself to be confined by a Cory Aquino overseen constitution in 1987. I think mm -hmm. push for constitutional change is very much in the cards. And the most likely outcome for the Philippines in the coming years is we are going to be more more like countries like Hungary or Malaysia, whereby you have elections, but we know elections will only legitimize a ruling coalition. It could be Marcos Jr., it could be Sara, the same kind of people. And then it's very possible under a new constitution, they will defang the Commission on Human Rights, they'll defang institutional checks and balances. So things could actually move in a very worrying direction if you believe in liberal democracy. Nonetheless, I said how Marcos will behave is not set in stone. There are three at least factors you have to keep in mind. First of all, what on earth is the opposition going to do? If they're going to be like 2016 when Baimaro has lost and then he started doing yoga and everything like that and there's no leader of opposition, 
good luck sa opposition. There's no, there's no pushback. But if the opposition transforms this toddler Bebo pink movement into a coherent movement, pushes for new candidates, mobilizes for the midterm elections, and so on and so forth, or preventing another constitutional change, then I think they can put some brakes on a potential downward trajectory under this administration towards hybrid regime authoritarianism.